He's chairman of one of India's biggest industrial houses. She's Raj Kapoor's daughter. In 1969, when they got married, it was the talk of the town. Today, their son is married to Amitabh Bachchan's daughter, and their name is the byword for glamour and glitz. But how did it all start, and what are they like? Well, let's see if you find out as I introduce you to Ritu and Rajan Nanda. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I gather, Ritu, that the first time you met Rajan, he was four hours late for lunch and simply breezed in and breezed out. Well, <laughs> it was our neighbor who introduced us and fixed up this lunch. And he had come for some meeting in Bombay. And of course, meeting a girl was just incidental. And he saw me at 5 o'clock in the evening before taking a flight back home to Delhi. But um, that's how it all started. And did he say, I'm sorry I've kept you waiting? I can't remember. But well, um, I do remember that <laughs> my father-in-law, who I was not very conscious of, I walked into his house and he said in his very typical uh, voice, he said, Ye koi aane ka time hai lunch pe, humne aapko lunch pe bulaya tha. And I told him, I said, look, I had a prior appointment with my grandfather and he took offense to the fact that I uh, did not make that appointment. So I'm sorry, I'm here anyway. Oh, but I remember, you know, Papa offered him a drink, you know, offered him a gin, he took it once, he offered him another drink, he took it, and when he offered him for the third time, he said, sorry, sir, your hospitality is great, but I just can't take it. I loved it. You said, that here? was the first time I said, oh my God, I like it. <laughs> because he has a man who can stand up to my father? I think so. I think all girls have a, a father complex, and uh, somebody who could talk to my father, and, you know, impressed me. <laughs> In fact, the other amazing thing with that beginning was Ritu didn't do much talking for the first four or five meetings, did she? Well, at first instance, I was eligible for marriage. My father had given me many propositions to meet families and girls. And I was very conscious of this. And I said, look, I have a sister and I wouldn't like to have a regret for my sister if somebody came to see her. So um, when I was approached and I met with Ritu, I liked her. But I was not quite sure she was going to be my companion. I wanted to talk to her, and she was terribly shy. She wouldn't even speak. And on only on the third occasion when we met in Delhi, her mother was talking about an incident where she got chicken pox, and she didn't know that she had chicken pox till it was all over. And Rita finally gave the golden words of saying, Mother, I could sue you for child negligence. And I said, OK, this girl's got something in her. And I went back straight to my father and said, I made up my mind I'd like to marry. But you really mean to say that if you hadn't heard that little story, you might I, never have made up your mind? I was not looking for just a pretty face. The amazing thing is after he made up his mind, he wooed and courted you like mad, didn't he? Down to the point when your father even ticked him off once. <laughs> yes, he would come every weekend from Delhi to Bombay, and he was my weekend friend. And like I said, it was an arranged engagement. But by the time we got married, it was a love marriage. Were you surprised that you'd fallen in love with him so fast? No, I waited for him for long, and I was so happy I found him. You know, my, my father-in-law, uh, you know, every weekend I'd come with a bouquet of flowers on a flight from uh, Delhi. And he took me aside that one evening, and he said, Aapko Delhi mein koi kaam nahi hai? And I was so, so self-conscious of that statement because I was very conscientious about my work and my responsibilities, etc., etc. I felt very offended. And I wrote promptly a letter to Ritu expressing my deep concern and, and disappointment at what her father had said. And threatening not to come back again? <laughs> no. Oh, no, not that far. I didn't do that because I had many overwhelming calls from Bombay. He said, please do not take him seriously. <laughs> <laughs> now, in fact, your father composed a special Bidai song, I gather, for your wedding. Yes. In fact, you know, that's the most prized possession that I have of my father today. Uh, that song actually is mentor of my life. And um, it was created when I got married in 69. Mukesh uncle had sung it, and Shankar uncle and Jackie Chan uncle had, you know, composed the music. I suppose it did it because Papa's friends. Um, uh, and he was virtually ruling the film industry. It was a song of love made 
with a lot of uh, messages which any father would give to a daughter. But today, I have that song in Papa's own words. The original was sung by Mukesh Shankar, but two months after Papa died, Mr. D.V. Kapoor, who is a very dear friend of Papa, he came to condole, and when he gifted me a cassette, and he said that a month after my marriage, which was in 69 February, Papa had gone to Moscow, and uh, in Mr. D.V. Dattar's house, he was... Um, people were talking about the marriage and he was remembering me and he sung that song he took a thali and he played the beat and he sung that song in his voice and uh, they recorded it do you remember any of the words of that song yes like i said it's a mantra of my life and it just meant ladli meri nazo ki pali chaldi teri doli moti wali and in fact it was uh, it's like I said, all parents bring up their children with certain uh, ways of life. And uh, it was like, after giving all those messages, it was like, dheere dheere mujhe bhool jana aur apne maa baap, ne maa baap ke saath zindagi A sort jana. of parting gift to you to say. Yes. Since Remember? I'm an agriculturist, I'll interpret her uh, story as a paddy field where you transplant from one field into another <coughs> and that's what the message you're trying to give her adapt that's yourself true. to the new family accept them as your parents and give us secondary importance I mean he was a man very emotional and he believed in very fundamental things of relationships and he's cast so many stories around emotions and he has uh, given all those values to Ritu which has made Ritu the wonderful girl she is. But it's not just your I path. like what Rajan is saying, nice words. Rajan, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to say he doesn't say them as often as you should? No. You're a bit remiss, aren't you? <laughs> it's not just your father-in-law. Your father-in-law's father, the legendary Prithviraj Kapoor, was also someone who was very special. I gather every time you went to meet him, he always gave you a little gift. You know, he was an amazing man. I'm, I, I, he was a towering personality. His presence was always felt in the room. He's the one who got us engaged. When I, I reached Raj Kapoor's home with my parents' presence, there was just a family gathering. And we were just socializing. I was not quite sure as to how that evening was going to end. Was I going to get committed that evening? And suddenly he, in his hoarse voice, commanded everyone to uh, the living room. in Zahav, but you sabi zarao. He pulled out a one rupee note from his hand. And he looked at my father and looked at me. He said, Nanda Sahib, I like your son. And Nanda Sahib, I like my son. This is the thaka. Subsequently, Ritu and me uh, used to call on him as Juhu Kutia. And he gave me three pieces of advice, which I value in practice even today. He said, Beta, whatever you do in life, do it in the whole world. Whatever you go to the whole Try and be a perfectionist in what you do. He says, Apni is a draknekili or apni apko, apni is a kosamalnekili, hat asse rakna, asse ni rakna. Why was it so important to do that? You should never be asking. You should be able to earn your own values and earn your own bread in life. And third thing he told me, which is the most important thing, which always drives us in different directions, is that wealth of an individual is in him, not around him. So in a sense, those are lessons that you keep with you as a company chairman, always? Always. The amazing thing is, it's not just that the two of you got married, but there are similarities in your background and childhood that are really quite uncanny. For instance, to begin with, none of you were very close to your fathers. Yours was quite a stern and distant individual, wasn't he? That's true. That's true. Because my father, post-independence, was very busy with life. And he couldn't accept the responsibility and possibly and probably couldn't give us the attention we as children needed from him. And my mother's life was also very disoriented, so he pushed us off to a boarding school at an early tender age of five. And has to feel hopelessly insecure being so far away from home. Because at that stage of life, that age and stage, you want more emotional support from parents. But I was away in a boarding school, tucked away, and immediately after finishing my uh, boarding life in Simla, I was pushed on to Dehradun, and right from kindergarten to senior Cambridge, I was at boarding. So did you, in a sense, grow up with a sense of vacuum in your life, missing daddy? I would. Missing family, 
uh, life and living with more emotion, living with soft, but rather than living as a disciplinarian under the command and control of a school. On the other hand, your father was so busy, you hardly ever got to see him as well. And so the timings were so different. When he would come home, we would be sleeping, and when we would, we were at school during the day, he was at work. You took to leaving letters under his pillow? Yes, that's the only way I could communicate with him. I would write little notes. I needed a piano, I wanted a piano, and I remember, you know, writing letters, please get me my piano, when is the piano coming? And whatever I wanted, you know, whether it was a can-can or a doll's wedding, anything, it always was a note under his pillow. Years later after he died, you wrote a book on him, and you said at the time that the book helped you understand your father. Did you really mean that? That's true, you know. Like Papa always said, a lot of work of any artist, of anybody in any creative profession, um, is autobiographical. You you leave it in behind, and you you know somebody picks it up and weaves it and puts it together. I researched on him, and I. But you really only got to know the man yes. when you did the research. Absolutely. Daddy himself. I didn't even know he you. loves me. No, we didn't even. There were so many things that he always said one never believed, and it's only through this research, and um, and by creating that book put pieces of life together and it all made sense and that's how it is. Both of you as a result grew up a lot closer to your mother. You say that you clung to her as a child and in a sense you said you fulfilled a void in her life as well. She was an unhappy woman. You see when a man is charged with ambition and is determined to build a life as an entrepreneur without any resource, he was just not available to my mother. And then he drifted further and further away from her. And I couldn't bear to see her in happiness. And I just wanted to be by her and to make her feel that I would support her in any and every way I possibly could as a child. She became the center of your existence? Well, both were. My father was also important and a center of my existence because he was, uh, you know, uh, my father was a giant of a man through his life. His life is an incredible story of an entrepreneur. He's written a book on him, and even when I read that book, I get amazed of how much courage, how much imagination. Except that as a child, he wasn't there when you wanted no, him. No, that he wasn't. And mummy was. My mother was. Mummy was the emotional anchor. And much the same is true for you. Yes, absolutely, you know. She kept it um, going all the way, and uh, she never made us feel that Papa was not around, though. So were you hurt when you saw the periodic upheavals in her married life? You know, it's strange, but I must confess that we as children never realized anything, you know, and every time, you know, um, um, it was, we, we, we could never understand. No, because she protected no. you so She much. protected us so much. And I suppose this is her expression of her love for her husband. Is you know, the thing that she never let her children know. After you met and the marriage was arranged, how long did it take you to realize the similarities? The fact that in a real sense you fulfill a need in each other. Between Rajan and me? That's right. Well, the difference is day and night. <laughs> we come from two different backgrounds, you know, married from show business. And yet you have similarities that are uncanny, and there's a sense in which to an outsider. Well, I suppose, like to say, un uh, unlike poles attract, huh, Rajan? <laughs> you know, uh, let me say the similarities are in the fundamentals of our value system. We may not have similar backgrounds from family upbringing, but uh, the fact that she was brought up by a mother and I was brought up also by a greater influence of a mother, we had the foundation of believing on the fundamentals of keeping uh, a good home and a congenial home and a cordial uh, relationship. And Ritu added so much. She came into the family and she believed in the fundamentals of relationships. She built those relationships. And today she enjoys the respect of, of my family more than I enjoy within my own. <laughs> And she is such an incredible woman that she's changed my ways too. And she's taught me the value system and keep the right attitudes and keep the right levels of humility and how to face hardships without uh, getting into self-sympathy. So Ritu, he given... once said of the two of you, we aren't extremists and we never challenge each other. No, we don't. In fact, I think 
that's that's our expression of love. I mean, Rajan said nice things, but I think I'm always standing on my head to please him. And the reality is that I'm trying to. Uh, You're hmm. still very much in love with the man you <laughs> yes, yes, as my much life. as you were 34 years ago. Oh yeah, seems like yesterday. My life, my priority, my obsession, my passion, my everything is Rajan, and it's the best thing that's happened to me in my life. And uh, I'm I'm always just striving to just please him. And um, let's take a break at that said. point. I want to come back and talk <laughs> to each of you a little bit more about yourselves. We'll be back in a moment's time. Stick with us. <laughs> Welcome back. My guests are Ritu and Rajan Nanda. Let's talk a little bit about yourselves. Now, you are today the chairman of one of India's most successful companies, and yet I gather you dropped out of college and you never trained to be a businessman. Which is absolutely true. I, I never took to school education. It never fascinated me. Practical life did. My father inducted me into a college in Delhi. And I found that I was wasting most of my time, and in all sincerity, I went to my father and told him, if it's inevitable that I've got to join you, take me in now. I'd rather learn the business practically. I, I was absolutely astonished that he accepted it. Are you a better businessman because you never trained to be one, never did an MBA like everyone else does? I believe that very sincerely because I didn't overstructure myself with education. I have a freer and an open mind. And I uh, use more imagination and common sense in taking my decision. Judgment is a very great keen, uh, key factor in uh, looking at an institutional management job. And I personally think it's helped me enormously. Of course, Jitu, he's not the only entrepreneur in the family. So are you. <laughs> but is it true that Nikitasha happened because one day you came home, there wasn't any it's gas true. and dinner was late? <laughs> yes, yes, actually. Working is the best thing that happened to me and my marriage. Like I said, we come from two different backgrounds. Love there is, love there always will be. But you know, to a man, especially to Rajan, he's a total workaholic. Everything is life, is priority, passion, obsession, is work, work, work. And I realized after a certain stage in life that uh, I, you know, he was always interacting with chairman and managing directors and all, and it didn't mean anything to me till I started working. And the day I started working, everything became alive. And it was my way of flirting with Rajan to get his attention by trying to be something, trying to achieve something. You, you're not joking. You, you're serious when you say that yeah. you got a job and started a company because yes. it was your it's way of getting his like, attention. You know, earlier I was only a housewife. Today I'm also a housewife. It started in the kitchen with Nikki Tasha. And uh, it started accidentally when I was cooking. And then and there's the famous LIC agent, the best and the most successful. How did that start? Well, there was a girlfriend of mine, Indraji, who suggested that I become an agent. She used to work with LIC. And uh, it was a stage of my life when, where I was looking for an uh, occupation. And that's how I became an agent. And earlier I was selling kitchenettes and televisions. And now the only different thing was I was selling insurance products. So I just marketed them with a different vision and I had a lot of fun uh, in uh, being an agent. You married a wife. Do you think you've got a rival in the bedroom? None whatsoever, because I think uh, what she has done is uh, in a total contrast to what I'm doing. She does not interfere with anything I do. She doesn't even wish to keep fully informed in how I'm performing in business. Does she take your advice on her business? Uh, not really, and this is where we keep our two activities away from each other. I think what she's done, she's given pedigree to whatever she's done in the work of corporate art or as a LIC agent. LIC agents, agents were real downstream people and she's given it a ramp up by what glamour she's given to as an agent. As for myself, I admire that achievement in her because I succeeded my father who was an entrepreneur and entrepreneurs are individuals. As I always say, self-made men are men who saved God a lot of trouble because they made themselves. <laughs> but you know, but they are very individual oriented and entrepreneurial because in the past the first generation of industry was by names of families. So when I stepped in I realized I had to convert an individually led company to an institution. So I became very professionally oriented man. 
So I admire what she does. She also has institutionalized art or insurance. Now I must tell you something your son says about Rajan. Your son says, Daddy is very shy, but he loves attention. From those who I'm emotionally attached to. And like I, tell, I was telling you, I'm standing on my head to please my husband. <laughs> attention <laughs> is everyone's weakness. I wouldn't deny it. And he likes you standing on his, your head. Well, He'd be upset if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he true. also says that daddy claims that he hates parties, but every time his birthday comes around, he can't stop asking, what are we planning? <laughs> Well, well I, I, I love parties, but as, as we get along in life, I'd like to uh, be connecting with people. I don't like large parties. Even if it were my own birthday party, I'd like it to be more intimate. I'd like it to be more interactive. So it's relationships rather than just crowds. Correct. And then he says, every time Daddy does something that makes him feel guilty, Mummy gets another ring. Oh, I really don't mind that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are some of those beautiful rings on your finger of signs of, of Rajan's course. guilt? Absolutely. <laughs> some I had to buy and gift him on his birthday, things that I wanted, and some, you know, he just bought and gifted them to me. That the, the amazing thing is that it's not just you that married into Bollywood, your son did too. And in each case you've married into the homes of the best and biggest stars of your time. Is that just a coincidence? Total. Absolute total. Our marriage was uh, really put together by a man who was a supplier to escorts and he felt that I, I was a candidate for Raj Kapoor's And your daughter. sons? Uh, you know, first of all, I must give you this little bit. Uh, he put me together with her father without she being there. And he asked me, how was the evening? I said, look, I'm not marrying Raj Kapoor, I'm marrying her daughter. <laughs> So that impressed my father-in-law. As far as my That's son is concerned... That's also another reason I said, hey, I must see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, as far as Nikhil is concerned, uh, he too met Shweta through some common friends who are designers, very good friends of ours, Abu and Sandeep. And they put the two together and they took an instant liking for each other. And that's how Amit and Jia and Ritu and myself got together and gave our nod to their uh, meeting and deciding what they wanted to do in life. And they make a wonderful uh, couple. But it's very ironical, you know. How, I mean, it, it, it's the same thing, you know. She comes from the same world that I did, and it's the same way, you It's know? a bit like history it repeating is, itself, isn't it? It is really isn't history it? repeating it itself to the T. Do you That's smile the sometimes thing. when you look at it and say, fate has had its last laugh? Well, I'm happy at what fate is doing, because I love what has happened. Rajan and Ritu, a pleasure getting to know the two of you. Thank you for this interview. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting us.